Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Adventure Time, Season 6, Episodes 15 and 16. So yeah, we are doing two episodes this time instead of just one. And the reason isn't what you might think. It's not just because we had last week off, it's not because I want to get to more of these and everything faster. Um, it's, <laughs> it's actually entirely because the two episodes were paired together in the same video. Uh, from where I got them from. <laughs> it's literally just because of that. Uh, when I when I was getting the video files and everything for the reaction, these two just for some reason happened to be in the same video. And so that's why we're doing it this way. <laughs> it's literally because of that. Because um, this week has been a little tricky for me starting things off. Um because of my shoulder issues i've talked about in other videos and all the reactions uh this week so far but for those of you who may not have watched those other ones uh just to put it simply uh as you may know this past weekend i was at yomacon and at some point during yomacon i hurt my shoulder i don't know how i i don't know what happened or even exactly when but i heard it pretty bad and I'm still recovering from it. And I'm icing it. I, I've taken some hot showers um, since it started hurting during the weekend and everything. And I'm going to keep nursing it. I'm going to keep trying to get it to heal and get better. But it has been hurting. And it, it, it it's better every day. Like, it's much better today as when I'm recording this. Um, although, I guess this is still Wednesday. So, <laughs> yeah, because this is still Adventure Time. But... It's better today than it was yesterday. And it was better yesterday than it was on Monday. So, it is getting better. It's just taking a little time. It's It was pretty bad during the weekend, especially on Sunday. Um, it, it, got, it got pretty damn bad. Um, so, it's good that it's healing. Um, it's just taking some time because of how bad it was. Um, and so... Yeah, that has caused me to be late on doing recordings and stuff for this week. Um, I wasn't able to record much on Monday. I, I wasn't really able to record much of anything at all yesterday. And so I'm doing a bunch of recording now, and it's like, or at least trying to get to as much as, as I can. And that's, it, it's been... It's been a slow start getting back to things this week. So I wanted to only do one episode of this. But, um, unfortunately, that was not in the cards because of how this was downloaded. And it's like, oh, I could technically only react to the first half of this video. But it's like, that would just be overly complicated. Because then I'd, I, then I'd have to stop it. And then for the next video, I'd have to find the exact point that it splits off at and everything. It's just like... I don't want to do all that. I'll just get to both here. So, yeah, that's why we're doing two. Um, last time we had um, Marceline and um, Lumpy Space Princess LSP just dicking around during the Princess Day event at, uh, at the Breakfast Kingdom and everything. There were some really fun, great interactions between Marcy and Bubblegum. Um, and it was it was an okay episode. But as I said in the afterthoughts and all, I would have rather seen stuff about the Princess Day than the little adventure that Marcy and LSP went on. Like, the Princess Day stuff was more interesting to me. But maybe that's just me. Either way, um, don't know what we're going to get into next because, as always, these episodes are usually not super well connected. There's some con uh, continuity 
between them and there's certain things that will come back and be important later. But the overall plots of the episode usually aren't really that um, overly connected. Um, there are some some exceptions to that, but for the most part, they're usually just kind of episodic, random bullshit. So, we'll see what happens this time. Um, and just get right into it, I guess, because I, I, I can't really think of anything else I would have to say leading into this all. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume the play. Because after fades to black, then fades back in, Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the um, episodes. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. I want to talk about the second episode, but we're going we're gonna to speed through the first one. So... The first one involves this meeting of uh, Candy Kingdom citizens basically talking about all the dark stuff that's going on in the kingdom, but just kind of as like a little harmless meeting. They don't plan to actually do anything about it. Uh, so Princess Bubblegum is just watching and laughing along, just having fun because she knows it's not a threat or anything. But then one of their members, Peace master i think his name was um he go he, he he he's planning to go a little far and he's planning to basically take down the kingdom and its leadership for the dark stuff that's happening in the kingdom this gets pb on red alert and we find out rather quickly that it's peppermint Bo. Um, because Peppermint Butler is a dark magic user, he's questionable morality-wise. Like, it, it's not entirely clear if he's a good guy or a bad guy. He's he, he does definitely dabble in dark magic, but we don't know exactly... At least, I don't remember if it ever said anything. I don't think it did. As to why he did it, or his alignment in regards to it. Sorry, I got distracted. Someone's playing music out there. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but... Um, yeah. So, we have an adventure scene, Peacemaster with his family and everything, getting involved with Peppermint Butler, who turns two of his kids into, um, mutants, basically. And threatens the other one unless Peacemaster does what he says and it's just a bunch of random bullshit. And that's pretty much the episode. It's basically just Peppermint Butler's dark magic stuff. And this one guy who's trying to stop it all and fails. In kind of a sad way. Because it's like this dude is... He clearly cares about his, his children and seeing them get turned into these mutants like legitimately upsets him like he's legitimately really sad about it and you see like at the end when his one kid is like can we go to the can i go to the park and eat flies and you see him sobbing and saying yes like in a defeated way it's actually kind of sad you feel bad for the dude it's definitely clear that he's the in in a way the protagonist of this episode and Peppermint Buller is the antagonist. Um, Princess Bubblegum is just there because she thinks that the kingdom is in danger and she's just trying to figure out what the hell is going on with that. <laughs> just trying to protect things and it's, it's more along the lines of the others in, in terms of their story. Um, so yeah, really interesting. But then we get to the Joshua and Margaret episode. So, we have a backstory episode telling us about Jake's birth. And if that was the only thing this episode was about, it would be 
it, it would be one thing, but the circumstances surrounding his birth. So Margaret is pregnant with uh, her and Joshua's child, which is putting a little bit of a damper on their business um, because Joshua doesn't want to risk anything. He doesn't want her to be put in danger, but she still wants to get out there and do her job, especially because they do need the money to be able to take care of a child. So they end up investigating this case from Tree Trunks, who has been getting her pies stolen. It's found out that they're, that her pies were being stolen by her husband, or in current day ex-husband, but apparently there is still something else out there. They investigate in the woods near Tree Trunks' home and find this shape-shifting creature that may or may not be an alien. It's, uh, it almost looked like there was a small implication of that. Um, but they end up encountering it, and during the encounter, it bites Joshua on the head. This causes him to start to undergo a transformative state, and while he's suffering under that, Margaret goes out to try and finish the job and get some venom in order to craft an antidote. And she manages to successfully get the creature back into its into this cave it seemingly it almost looks like it was pretending to be a baby just to kind of get out of uh, the situation um but she takes the venom anyways and escapes at which point the creature makes a really interesting has a really interesting reaction it laughs and then opens a portal out of there and it's like okay what does this mean um we don't know yet it has it, it didn't reveal that in this episode but we find out that the bite that Joshua received is starting to create this growth which eventually becomes Jake and this explains Jake's shape-shifting ability um, he was born from this shapeshifter injecting venom and I guess as, as kind of gross as this sounds, reproductive fluids into Joshua's head. This causes him to, this causes basically this growth to be a a baby basically joshua is basically pregnant and the when fully formed it pops off of him into jake combining the dna both of joshua and the shapeshifter um meanwhile the actual child that um margaret is pregnant with is Jermaine, who we have heard about before. I don't know if we've actually seen Jermaine before, but we've definitely heard about him. Um, I don't remember exactly when, though. Um, but Jake, Jake had mentioned him before. Um, so, Jermaine is more of a fully biological child between uh, Joshua and Margaret while Jake is basically the half child of Joshua and the shapeshifter in a way and with the way the shapeshifter laughed and all you almost have to wonder if this was intentional. And if it was, why? Why did the shapeshifter do this? And what could that mean going forward? Um, but even more so, I almost don't want to say this because it sounds like I'm going to a really heavy extreme but 
if you think about it, it's kind of true. And it's horrible, and it, it's really freaky, but if you think about it, this alien, like, or creature, or whatever it is, um, I'm just kind of, I, I know, I'm just kind of assuming alien. This creature impregnated Joshua. L like, let's just be honest, that's basically what happened. Against his will. In a way, this was sexual assault. Like, straight up rape. And it's like, I, I, I mean, a lot of people will will probably not see it that way. Um, and kids definitely won't understand. But as someone who has been sexually assaulted and as someone who has had friends and has just known people in general who have been sexually assaulted, it's like, it, it just... It stuck out to me in that kind of way. Like, it, it very much felt like that to me. Because again, it's unquestionable that this creature basically, to put it as simply as possible, impregnated Joshua. It was against Joshua's will, and it created, it caught, well, even if it hadn't, it was for the intention of reproduction and stuff. And you, you get what I'm saying. I'm terrible at explaining things, and this situation is just super fucking awkward. But that's kind of what it came across to me. And I, I mean, like, I'm just kind of reeling over that because it's just so fucking disturbing. Like, this show has gone into many adult uh, territories before. Unquestionably. Adventure Time has a lot of adult references, jokes, and plot points that kids would never understand. And a lot of times, this stuff is handled in a very subtle way. To where it's not like, oh, it's not like blatantly saying this thing is happening. But it's pretty fucking obvious um, what it's actually talking about. Even if it's trying to be subtle about it, it's fairly obvious what it's trying to say. Um, so, so it's not out of the question that Adventure Time would even touch on something like that and, and do it in such a weird, unique way that it would, that some people might not even realize it. But that is 100% what that came across as to me. And it's, it's really fucked up and horrible and I hate it, but I almost have to give credit for them for being willing to put that in there and even be willing to show that they still loved and cared for Jake despite that despite everything it, he was still their son and I give credit for that and, and obviously everyone's situation is different that wouldn't be the same for everyone going under that situation or going through that situation but Still, it's it's such a bold move. And, and I don't even know if that was their intent. It could have been just an accident that it ended up, like, looking that way. But if, if it was intentional, that is an extremely bold move to make in regards to explaining how Jake was born. Um... And I'm still wondering what the purpose for it was. Because this this creature, after Margaret got the venom and left, laughed. Like, actively laughed. And then portaled out of there. What does that mean? Th this can't just... Adventure Time is known for putting little things in there and, and then coming back to them later. I, I mean, the Lich is a big example of that so I, I i very much do not believe that that was just the end of that i i definitely believe we're going to get some kind of resolution to that at some point but what is that going to be 
does it mean that Jake is kind of like this ticking time bomb of evil or maliciousness of some sort? That or that at some point Jake is like gonna be like is gonna turn on them or something, or maybe Jake is like being prepared for something. Um for the use of this race of shapeshifters. I don't know. There's a lot of questions that come out of this. So I'm definitely interested to see what happens with this in the future. Because again, you know something's got to. They, they set it up too much. Um, but yeah, there's a, cer there's a certain boldness to this episode that does admittedly make me very uncomfortable as a sexual assault survivor and everything but there's also a certain respect for just how far this episode went and the kind of implications it does have that they were willing to take it that far and it was entertaining it was interesting it, it got my mind going and thinking and I, I guess you would call that a success. And it, it gave us big backstory information on Jake, so, and his parents, and that's always appreciated. It's just, I, I'm just, I am very uncomfortable about the entire thing, though, because of, because of, you know, it's just, it's, it's just very uncomfortable. I don't know how else to put it. So. Hopefully. This does get explained at some point. We do get some. Resolution to what was set up here. Um, but tell me in the comments below. What did you think of this episode of Adventure Time? Or these two episodes of Adventure Time. I almost forgot that the first one. Existed there. Episode 15. <laughs> um. What did you think of both of these episodes of Adventure Time, 15 and 16, uh, for season 6? Um, and as always, no spoilers. Because although I do know a couple things going forward, I still want to remain as spoiler-free as possible, just to avoid learning anything else. So thank you all so much for tuning in, and for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.